I don't know what my brother KJ was thinking when he installed this little tiny stream. Well, it must have been so that way if he broke out of jail in Oklahoma, he could get in his Firebird and head out to, uh, to Arizona or, wait, did that happen? No, that did not happen. Anyways, don't know why this little Grant GT stream roll is in the Firebird that I picked up, but I don't like it and I want it gone and I would like to have a nice big stream roll that was originally in the Firebird. So. With that, um, I'm going to snap my fingers and see if I can't make this disappear. Like, I, I, damn it. Try this again. Ah, like that. That's that's the set. But the wheel didn't change. All right, here we go. Ah, there it is. There it is. There's the new steering wheel. Woo, the magic of YouTube and video. All right, now let's really fix this. Where's my beer? All right, so let me show you if you if you have one of these Grant strain rolls and you need to remove it, I'm gonna show you how to remove it and uh, then we'll put on the new wheel and see how it looks. So first things first, let's see if we can get this, this hub off of here and this porn button that doesn't work at all. Great. I'm not sure if this just pops off. Just like that. And there's our big bolt. Oh, nice. Is this one here is not turned down. Um, I wonder. There's that cap. I wonder if that will just come off with a breaker bar. Let's find out. So I'm betting since this is a Grant strain wheel and it's not a factory, that uh, that does seem like there's a lot of play in that. But let's just see if we can't uh, back this nut out. It is a uh, three fourths, 19 mil. My, can I even? Well, I got the nut off. Now the question is, does it just... Ah, uh, look at that. Woot, woot. And, uh... I've got a Grant steering wheel. So, uh, I think I know somebody that wants this steering wheel, so... Send me your address, bud. You know who you are. And I'll send it to you. Uh, there's that. The flashers? Oh, they do. The flashers work. I've never even tried that. That's cool. All right. Um, let's go get the other one and let's see how she snaps on. Let's go. So if you remember, uh, Louis Lawn, who is the guy over at First Generation Garage, sent me this strain wheel, the Firebird. And I'm going to install it just temporarily right now. So this here horn piece just pops off. There's just three little clips. Just yank it off. That looks like the horn button is just going to go into there. Uh-oh. I see some breakage. But that's what we're, that's fine. We're, we're restoring this thing. So we're just going to stick it on here. Uh-oh. I said we're just going to stick it on here. I think that might be part of our reason. If that's the way it's supposed to go on, and those are my wheels are supposed to be straight right there. So that's uh <laughs> that's kind of funny. That that explains a, a few little things. Yeah, yeah. Cause that is where it fits. And of course this is uh the horn button that goes down into there, I believe. So that when you push on it, it will push down and make contact, right? Yep. That's well, if I had one. That is that's a trip. That is a trip. Just just for fun. Just for funsies. 
All right, so it's on. So that's how my stern wheel's fitting right now. Uh, that's not right. <laughs> so uh, we're going to do it that later. First, let's go ahead and we'll tear this wheel down and we'll get to inspect it a little bit closer. But look at that. Hmm. Okay, well, let's take this ball back off. All right, we got the Pontiac wheel up on the uh, table. Of course, this here just pops off. Now, is it me or is that green in there? I'm not sure if you can see that. It looks green. I don't know if that's, comment down below if that's normal um, for everything. So in here, it looks like we have one, two, three screws that are holding in the uh, metal bars here. And I think on the back side, there's one, two, and three. So let's grab a screwdriver. Let's get in here and let's just take these uh, screws out. First one. Oh, long suckers. Oh, no. Nah. Not too bad. So there's one. Come over here. Get this one out of the way. And then this third one right here, which is already halfway out. Take that out. All right, so those three are done there. So we'll flip the wheel over again. Oh, and there's those broken tabs. Yay. And then down here. Oh, yeah. So put your hand there. Just kind of brace it. I'll undo these. And I'm curious if they're going to be the same screws as over yonder. Let's find out here. And nope, they're a little bit bigger. So they are a bit bigger so you can't mess them up mix them up so we'll go around and i said we'll go around yeah that's louie <laughs> uh the gentleman who sent me the uh steering wheel from uh, first generation garage if you haven't i know i've probably said it a million times but go follow him subscribe he is rebuilding several birds and a gto apparently so let's get this one out all right there's another one and then this third one over here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And pop that back and up. Okay, now, aha. That guy there did not have the wires attached. So, aha, they're just little spade connectors. And they are, are they glued on there? It looks like you can take off the entire contact. All right, so let's do that. Go ahead and we'll just pull these off as well. those yeah there we go now we don't have to worry about that wire now these two here they are roughly the same yep looks like the inside ones are the same so we'll do that one as well we'll take this one off so there's two Screws that hold the connector on, and then there's three screws that hold the uh, metal plating down. I'll take this off. All right, so we now have our three brackets. Pull them offside, and there's our little wiring. And we'll, oh yeah, look at that. And we'll see about cleaning all this up as well. So here's our wheel. This is, uh, we've stripped it down for the most part. And I don't think that part, I think that part is molded into it. Yep, sure is. So let's go clean this up. I'm gonna go dump it in some hot water 
uh, with some soap and just see if, ugh, if we can clean this up. Okay, well, this is the uh, sink in the laundry room that's off the garage, so why not stop that up and uh, turn on some hot water. It's not real hot right now, but it's gone, you know, because it's 50% um, less scrubbing and um, it takes grease off the stuff, doesn't it? I think that's what that's supposed to do. So it's just, that should be enough. That should be enough. Let's get some suds. Oh, now the water's going up. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey I can even wash the sink because the wife's been telling me, wash the sink. You're always so dirty in there. Rawr, 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 rawr. All right, one steering wheel. In she goes. I'm going to fill up where it covers it, and then we'll uh, go to the town. Then go into the bathroom, grab your wife's toothbrush, and let's go scrub that wheel down. <laughs> All right, we're back. We got the wife's uh, toothbrush, and then we're just gonna go and kind of wash it all down and scrub it up really good, and I'll save you that part, and we'll come back to this. All right, that's cleaned up, so let's uh, pull the plug, and let's uh, try this thing off. Ooh, soapy. All right, we basically have a pan here of hot, soapy dishwater. And we're going to take our chrome pieces and just uh, throw them in here for a little bit. Oh, let's them down. Cleaned them up with some uh, steel wool. Let's let them soak for a little bit more and then we'll do it one more time. Next, we'll try that. Try this side. So we have these two pieces here that have busted off tabs. You can see here's one that's not busted. You can see how it kind of, how that lays. So thinking we'll take some JB Weld. We'll smear some up. That's probably more than plenty for it. Then we'll mix them up. Where it becomes that JB Weld gray. wash your hands all right so i bought these bits off amazon there's a link down below and yes you will make me a nickel or two if you buy these but they just go on a uh, dribble or a harbor freight special and we're just going to get in there and widen up those holes and kind of make them into a v you know like that so that way that epoxy this stuff here which i also got on amazon link none of that and made in america thumbs up so let's just get at this. Let's get these cracks along this wheel opened up a little more and beat out so we can uh, get to fix this wheel. Let's do this. And uh, eye protection. Don't want uh, any of this little crap in your eyeballs.
of metal. So I basically went around and just opened up all the holes a little bit bigger and kind of put them in that V cut. So now we're gonna get our sandpaper out and we're going to uh, sand it down. Okay, next we'll do some 80 grit sandpaper and we're just gonna go and sand down what we can. So we wanna go around the edges where we're gonna apply our epoxy in the cracks, get everything we can kind of sanded down to uh, give that epoxy something to grip onto. So here we go. hub. Now that we've sanded it down, we're going to take rubbing alcohol and some paper towels and we're gonna wipe everything down to make sure it's completely clean before we start the process of putting on the epoxy stuff. So let's get that done. Wipe down all the spots, try to get it in the cracks if you can. And I think for as cheap as this is, I'm just going to kind of douse it like that. Make sure everything gets a, a good cleaning. Remember to get in those cracks if you can. All right, now that I've made a humongous mess on my bench, at least I know it's all going to be hopefully cleaned out of any kind of dust or anything. That's probably not a bad time to go and just give the wheel a good cleaning overall. Okay, we'll put this out in the Arizona sun. It'll be dry in no time. So this is the two-part epoxy primer that I got off of Amazon. There'll be a link down below. So we'll take it out of the package. It says directions. Prep surface by roughing up and making sure the surface is clean and free of dirt. Do not apply subject to cured epoxy at over 200 degrees. Uh, what? Do not subject. Oh, so don't put it out in the Arizona heat. Got it. Do indoors. Got it. Uh, let's see. Remove from dispenser, the press plunger. Easy to then and mix thoroughly. A flat surface. Replace cap. Okay. Um, I think we got this. This seems pretty self-explanatory. So, uh. We'll get this out. I said we'll get this out. That's what it looks like. Again, link down below. You will make me a nipple, but you know, it's YouTube. So apparently we're gonna twist this, pull that off. That was easy enough. 
And then we're going to pour a little bit. Now, Jonathan over at Vinyl Village Garage, he used Cheerios. And today we're going to use Welch's uh, Fruit Snacks box. So either way. So uh, pull a little right here. We'll use that to start off with. We'll recap this. Let's see, like like so maybe. Um, how did that go on? Probably like that. So now it's sealed up and we can work this stuff here. It says a 15 minute work. So it says to mix it up thoroughly. Let's do that. Probably should be wearing gloves too, but uh, it's just too hot here in Arizona to put damn gloves on. So uh, let's work on this first one right here. Coming over here, and we're just going to get it and just work it down into that groove. Okay. Over here, and we'll do this other side. Maybe a little bit more on that one there. Okay, not enough. Let's see if we can't do this. This little small crack right here. Hopefully, just kind of work it in there, push it down in. You can't use too much because you're going to be sanding this over in a little bit. So, and I might have to mix up some more for that part right there. Didn't quite have enough to get all the way around. So, I'll mix up a little more and we'll keep going. on this wheel on this back side here yeah much better much better just work it in there get it on there nice and full Now you're going to see it from this front part, so I'm going to spend more time on this front part, making sure it is uh, filled in the gap there. Coolness. All right. I'm just going to keep going and uh, make our make our way around. All right. Let's go and let that dry, and uh, we'll come back and and uh, see how she uh, holds up. Cool. So it's been a couple hours. Kind of still a couple little indents in here. Not a hundred percent, but I think we go over one more time. Just kind of if it's high, we can sand that down, but if it's low, we can't. So one more time around there, and I think then we'll do the bottom. So let's pour us out some more gunk here. Some more epoxy. Remember, it's a 15-minute work time, so I'm trying to 
do this in stages. Get us another tongue depressor. Let's mix this shit up. Just gonna go back around and just double check this. Remember, better if it's high so that way we can thin it out later. I'm gonna go to sand it. It's almost like working with Bondo. Okay, as you can see, I'm building it up really thick in there. Remember, we're going to be sanding this down. I know I've said it a hundred times, probably even off camera or edited, but the whole point is to build this up and fill those gaps. Um, and I'm betting you I'm going to have to have a another tube of resin. There's that big one. Unfortunately, there's not a lot you can do to get in there. All right, I'm gonna have to order me some more epoxy. All right, it's next morning, and uh, this is the results of our gluing here. That's that big top one. And over here, let's see if we can turn this over a little bit. And there's kind of a close-up of that. Still needs a little bit right there. Didn't quite get all the way. But uh, let's see over here. So now the process is to sand all the glue to make everything smooth and shape it up like it was before. So let's get out our uh, sandpaper and uh, let's get to uh, get the sanding. All right, let's get to sanding. I think we'll start on one of these spokes right here. Let's just see what we can do here. We're just going to be taking off. Trying to just level it out. Get that epoxy back down to the same height as the rest of the wheel. Wow, that's already 80 grit sandpaper, by the way. Between those spokes. You can see that's what maybe a minute or two, and uh, it's just filing it right down. It's just Keep doing it until you can uh, not feel any edges. So I've been sanding and sanding and sanding, and uh, it's not perfect, but it's it's getting there. And so you can kind of see. There's a close up of that and that crack. Not quite done done, just yet, but it's getting there. On a, it's smooth, but a little bit more sanding. Take it up to about 400, and then about 600 grit and we should be rock and rolling for a first coat of primer on that got all my hardware now taken care of you can see that one there didn't need much work but these other two arms is that jb weld is pretty heavy on there now i can sand that down and get that to go but 
when this all goes together, that's going to be covered up by the, the button in the middle. So I think I may leave that just for structural support because it's going to need it. All right, well, let me uh, keep sanding and I'll bring you back in a little bit and we'll see where we're at. All right, it's time to use some rubbing alcohol and clean off all the dust and see where, uh, where we're at with this. As you can see, it got a lot off there. Do it one more time. Okay, let's let that sit. I think we'll shoot it with our first coat of primer. I shot out some primer just to kind of see where there were some spots that I had to fix. And there are some spots here. So I went ahead and put in some glaze putty in there. Now we're going to sand it down one more time. See if we can't get this wheel back to uh, as perfect as we possibly can. All right. So went ahead and sanded down those spots. And I feel good. I don't feel any stuff. It feels nice and soft. Uh, maybe right there I need a little bit more sanding, but I think for the most part, she sounds pretty good. Let me sand that one more part one more time. Where did I feel it? Right there. And then I'm gonna shoot another coat of primer on it and see how she looks. All right, so I brought it into the garage. It's a little windy out. I did after three coats of gloss black, I did come in and just kind of scruff up the surface a little bit before I put the clear on. So let's go ahead and we'll grab the clear. We'll put a clear of coat on, a clear, a coat of clear on, and see how this works. Well, the wheel is out and um, it's not perfect, but you know what? It is good enough for this job and for the Firebird until the meantime, because I didn't think I'm digging a wooden steering wheel. I saw many at the Firebird Fest. I'd love to get my hands on one for my bird. So let's put this back together. We'll start out by assembling our horn buttons. Lay out your two bars. As you can see, I did do some JB welding on this, and it seems to be holding up pretty good. I can smooth this out, make it look prettier, but it's covered by the center cap, so I'm deciding to leave it for now. So your two buttons should have little plastic pieces on the back sides of those, and they go in just face down. Doesn't matter which way. Next, your electrical contacts. They're gonna go on like that. This shorter end goes to the outside. The longer dented in end goes towards the center of the uh, cap there. So, the lady likes that. You have a set of screws. You have two. We'll lay those out. 
They're going to go into this middle one here. The big screw that comes in from the outside of the steering wheel goes in there. So, one Phillips screwdriver. Line this up. Get it in place. And tighten it down. Make sure it's seated all the way. Okay, there's one. This other one. Same thing, long end goes towards the inside, short one goes out to there. Okay, so those two are now together. I'm going to pull this back, grab our wheel. So, one well, with no horn buttons obviously goes here. And of course, the two horn button ones are going to go on here. And that little wire is going to slip down to that big hole right there. Just line all these up. Now, what I like to do is take the three screws that go on the bottom, or the bigger ones, and we're going to work them in now. That way they can kind of hold on to everything before we start. Right, find the hole, Brian. go and we'll put a few turns in that just to grabs and we'll do the other side the other three sides two sides on a few screws just a few threads and our last one over here up to the hole making sure you're grabbing a hold of okay awesome next line up these that should be going to that big hole Line those all up. And you got three more smaller screws. Again, pretty simple. Line up where these are at and get them tightened down. Now, when it comes to this one here, this is the one I did not repair. I'm going to, I'm going to tighten it down snug, not too tight. The other two, because I made repairs to them, I think I'm just going to. Be real easy with how they go down. Go. As soon as I can feel it tightening up the bar, we're going to stop. Just, I mean, we'll just see. There we go. Now, that goes down there for your horn button. Let's flip this over. And we'll finish tightening up these ones on the back side. And again, no power tools, just hand tools. You don't want to over tighten. This is all 50 plus year old plastic. All right. We'll do one more. That one goes in there. We have our two bars now. I haven't done anything about the pitting. Um, I just, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I don't think it can be handled correctly, but when it all comes back together, that is what she looks like. I'm going to try to put this on until it's actually on the car, but uh, just to give you a visual of, of where we were at and where we are today. Now, if you remember in the beginning of the video, the steering wheel was cockeyed. Well, the issue wasn't the steering wheel or the linkage or anything off the steering. It was the cam here. You can literally move the cam just by rotating it. And that's all that was. It just needed to be rotated over a little bit to where it lines up. Now, there are lining marks. Hopefully you can see those. There's a line there. That is for centering. Now, mine's at the bottom should be at the top so it's 180 turned but it's a circle so it doesn't matter so let's go ahead and grab a steering wheel let's 
pop her on there. Let's get in here and there we go. Easier to do with two hands, but it's on. Now, uh, this here should be going through that hole there for your horn. And of course, now I don't have my horns hooked up, but let's get the big washer. We'll get that on there. And we'll get the big nut. And we'll get it on. There we go. Okay, tighten that sucker down. We'll go ahead and grab our center cap. And we'll get it situated on. All right, it is down. And check that out. Right on. That is cool. Of course, gotta get those horns on, but we got ourselves a steamroll, folks. Looks pretty cool. Matches now. That drive, uh, I'm gonna paint that black, keep the dash red for the rest of the car, but uh, we'll paint that. That matches all up. <laughs> right on. All right, guys, if you have enjoyed this video on how to budgetly restore a classic GM steering wheel, go and give me a thumbs up. Please uh, hit that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber already. We are restoring a 67 Firebird 400, and I'd love for you to follow me on this journey because we may have another Firebird waiting in the wings to uh, get after once this one's all said and done. All right, guys, thank you so much. We'll see you next Friday for another Firebird Friday video.